This is rebuilding a large Clarkson single cylinder vertical steam engine. This is part 13, completing the machining of the new slide valve. In the previous episode I described how I machined this nice block of gunmetal from a rough piece of gunmetal, and it's now exactly to dimension. What I need to do now is transfer some more dimensions from the drawing to the piece of metal. The position of the machined recess in the slide valve is critical and must match the cylinder exactly. If you're not sure about this and you want to have a second opinion, have a look at your cylinder ports. It's best to measure twice and mark out once, which is pretty much the same as measuring twice and cut once, but you're not cutting until you've marked it out. You will notice that on this drawing all the dimensions are in imperial, 11 sixteenths, one and a quarter inches, half inch. Here in England for many years we've used the metric system, which makes a lot of things simpler but I prefer the imperial system because that's the one I was taught at school. Before you can continue you need to know what exactly half of one and a quarter inches is, and if you're not comfortable with fractions you could of course google it, that would give you the answer, or you could lay your ruler on the drawing, that would give you some rough idea. Anyway, cutting a long story short, half of one and a quarter inches is five eighths of an inch. The finished dimension of this valve is three quarters of an inch by one and a quarter inches by five eighths of an inch tall. If it's any larger than five eighths, the steam chest cover will not fit on, and that is not a good thing. Gunmetal is a very soft metal, and if you want to know more about the physical properties of gunmetal, I would suggest that you Google it. And when marking out on gunmetal, you need only the lightest of scribes across the piece. If your scribe marking lines are too deep, you'll only have to remove them on a piece of sandpaper. So here we have the centre mark, and I'm counting up the eights. There they are, five of them at each side. As I mentioned earlier, it's very important to check that the slide valve recess corresponds with the cylinder. Here's the port face of the cylinder, and I'm just giving it a quick check with the ruler. It's not perfect, but it's within dimension. If the slide valve recess is too big, like it is on the original valve, the engine can never work. In a steam engine of this type, the slide valve is the most important part. If this is not machined correctly, the steam engine will not work at all. If the piston fit is sloppy, the steam engine will not have much power. But if the slide valve does not admit and exhaust the steam properly, it just cannot work. The slide valve is now marked out for the cutting of the recess. But before I machine the recess, using a very small milling cutter, as the large face cutter is already fitted to the machine, I'm going to remove the eighth of an inch. This will make the slide valve five eighths of an inch deep from top to bottom, as you can see on the drawing here. Then it's over to the milling machine to remove this eighth of an inch that we don't need. I appreciate a lot of people who watch my videos are beginners, and I do tend to cater for beginners, because anyone who's an expert doesn't need to watch a video like this. So to all the experts out there who feel obliged to write in and tell me that I'm doing this, that and the other wrong and why don't I do it this way and did I know that I could do it this way? Uh, yeah, I've got a pretty good idea. I'm 63 years old and I've been doing this sort of thing since I was a young man. So any comments I let through onto the page have been vetted by me and I think they'll be useful to the viewer. There are many ways to do this sort of a job. This is my way of doing it and it might be a bit illogical in places, but it's the simplest method. Someone wrote in the other day, saying what I should really do is machine one surface flat and then put that surface against the machine vice jaw and put a twist drill shank on the opposite side, do another surface and then keep putting the twist drill at the back. Now that's all right, yeah, that makes a lot of sense and it is a way of doing it, but gunmetal's too soft for that, so what you would end up with, in my opinion, would be four surfaces, three with a very nice twist drill shank shaped depression in them. You will notice on the work quite a large burr is building up as the face cutter goes back and forth. This burr is all the way around the edge and before the next part which is cutting the recess you can either remove this burr with a file, a piece of sandpaper or on a linisha belt sander which is the way I did it. So once the block's been deburred after it's been cut the next job is to mill the recess in the slide valve. I'm using a much smaller milling cutter as you can see here and yes I know it's held in a drill chuck it's held in a very old, very stiff drill chuck that seems to be okay, it doesn't vibrate loose. I do have a Clarkson milling chuck, but it takes too long to mess about with the collets. And this is a very light duty milling job, so it's perfectly fine in this old tight chuck. You will notice that I start in the middle, 
never start up against the line because the first cut, if you're a little bit presumptuous with it, a little bit heavy-handed, this very small milling cutter is likely to wander all over the place and make a mess of the edge. So I'm starting in the middle. This old milling machine has got some longitudinal stops and these are set to the maximum length of the slide valve's recess. I don't have any side-to-side -side stops so I do this manually. I quite like this part of the job, I'm sure I must be doing it wrong as usual, but it seems to be very satisfying doing this. Back and forth and side to side and then take the middle out and then start again in the middle. And eventually I get the depth that I require and I get a really nice looking slide valve. Obviously all of the time I spent as a child playing with an old etcher sketch that I used to have has finally come in useful. Here is a finished slide valve and the recess is very neat and dimensionally accurate which is what I really wanted it to be. The next job is to mark out the positions for the two cross slots at the other side of the valve and then put it in the machine vice as you see here and chow away with a milling cutter, not as quick as this, I've speeded it up as you can see. In actual fact this milling cutter is slightly smaller than is needed for the valve rod to pass through the slot, so once I've got it to finish size I just take a little bit more off each side, which not only cleans up the edges of the slot, it makes for a perfect fit, it's a slack fit, don't forget slide valves must not be tight on any parts of their travel. And it's almost worth taking into consideration the fact that gunmetal expands slightly more than stainless steel when it's heated, as in when the engine's in steam. So if you get it just a little bit slack, it may tighten up. Cutting the cross slot is more or less the same as I've just described, and don't forget to make sure it's not a tight fit on the brass piece that the valve rod screws into. A nice easy fit's what we need here. A couple of thou clearance will be fine. And just to demonstrate, here is the piece of brass in the original valve, and it's not a really tight fit, but it's tight enough. And in the valve that I've made, the threaded brass piece just falls out under its own weight. I suppose you don't really need to do this next bit. I'm trimming it to shape, approximately to the plan, and I suppose this reduces some reciprocating weight, which is a good idea. The final part of the job is to clean up the piece of metal. I'm using some 400 wet to dry sandpaper and a bit of oil. You don't really have to do this, it's hidden in the steam chest, but that is not the point. My father always taught me that if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well. So this little bit of extra effort makes for a very nice looking component. The oil on the sandpaper just makes the sandpaper cut better. If you use it dry, then it gets a bit lumpy and it can actually scratch the component. But a bit of machine oil like this just gives you a better finish. Now when I put the valve over the drawing, as you can see, it's not 100% the same as the drawing, but it's only the outer shape. All the vital dimensions are very accurate. And in every way, it is considerably better than the old one. For starters, the cross slot is actually in the middle on mine. This one is offset, and I wonder why that is. If you look at the steam chest, you will notice that on the right-hand side, it's quite thin. On the left-hand side, too much material has been left in place so the slide valve cannot traverse fully across the steam chest, which means it cannot traverse fully across the ports. Look, see? There's just not enough valve travel there. So all I have to do is reduce the left hand side to the same as the right hand side and everything will be good. The birds will start to sing and the sun will come out. And with space for the valve to move up and down in the steam chest properly, the engine will work. Not far off now, I'm looking forward to seeing this go. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.